What's the difference between big data and analytics? Well, I feel big data is really a description of an engineering problem. It's not a description of uh, something that necessarily generates value. And when people try and define big data, they normally define it as something like working with more data than fits into memory on a regular computer, you know, something where you have to scale across multiple machines or CPUs. These are engineering challenges, and they're engineering challenges we've had as long as I've been involved in data and analytics over the last 20 years. Analytics, on the other hand, is a description of a way of generating value from data. It could be a small amount of data, it could be a medium amount of data. Um, but what it is, it's talking about how do we take this data and generate insight from it using some kind of uh, algorithm or some kind of process which is more than just aggregating it into a table or drawing it on a graph. It includes things like predictive modeling, for example, which is one of the most important uses of uh, analytics today. So when you're starting with a new predictive modeling problem, how do you choose an algorithm? I mean, can you walk me through that process? Yeah, uh, absolutely. But I mean, maybe to start, I'd say choosing the algorithm is probably the least important question. So that, that was a great question. Then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it leads us in exactly the right direction, sure. which is uh, uh, to talk about what kind of choices do you have to make when you're looking at predictive modeling. Mm -hmm. The th most important thing when you're looking at predictive modeling is to look at the question you're trying to answer. And I split that into two parts. The first is the objective that you're trying to drive. So for example, I used to run an analytics company in insurance, which was focused around the objective of maximizing the profit of each individual customer. Mm. The second thing we look at is what I call the levers. What are the things that I can actually change that's going to impact the objective? And insurance, the most important one by far, is the price that you set. So with this in mind, the understanding that I'm trying to maximize profit by changing price, I can now go away and say, what kind of model do I need to build which would hook up those two pieces? So I then know, as I change price in this way, profit will be impacted in that way. And I can look for a predictive modeling or other type of mm. modeling algorithm that hooks them up together. So there's a considerable amount of thought that goes in advance there, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and in fact, in that case, there would be a good five or six predictive models underneath that get joined up I together. See. So for example, there needs to be a traditional actuarial risk model, which is what's the chance that Mac's going to crash his car over the next year and how much is that going to cost us? Mm -hmm. The kinds of things I would think about in designing that model would be how can I implement that? Uh, what are the regulatory issues around what I'm actually allowed to do and so forth? So people normally use fairly simple, readily describable models like logistic regression for that piece. There's a piece which will be about elasticity, which will be like, okay, if I offer Mac uh, this policy for $500, how likely is he to actually accept that? And this is now trying to model the reaction of a human brain, which is quite complex. And in this piece, I'd probably use a quite a sophisticated uh, kind of black box model like a random forest uh, or a support vector machine that really mm -hmm. can, can harness all of those deep interactions that goes into people's decision-making process. So in the end, the choice of, of a predictive modeling algorithm to me is all about what you're trying to achieve and what the constraints are. So last question for you. Do you feel that data science is defined by its tool set or is it defined more by the the creativity and the mindset of the people who are approaching these problems. It is totally about the people. Um, data science um, is actually a, a wonderful concept that has allowed a group of diverse people to come together under one umbrella and understand that they share uh, a set of tools, a way of working, um, a certain culture indeed. Um, the kinds of data scientists that work on Kaggle come from fields like myself. I'm from a philosophy background, mm -hmm. from glaciology backgrounds, physics, engineering, computer science. But what we all have, in some ways maybe there is a tools piece here. We all understand machine learning. We all understand mm. how to get a computer to answer a question for us by giving it the data rather than giving it the domain knowledge and telling it how to solve the problem. We let the machine do it for us. So this underlying theme of machine learning as a tool is something that really ties us all together. And it means that we can, as a group of people, data scientists can solve problems in domains we've never looked at before. And it, all it requires is uh, creativity, open-mindedness, tenacity, and a good skill set to do so. To me, those are the four 
pieces which make a good data scientist. Great. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking thanks the time. Thanks very much, Mick.